All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be going over the logic to make interchangeable faces, which you can also apply to being able to make full facial animations. So let's do it. So a little bit of background to set this up. Now I've seen people that have been using this as a way to create their own facial animations. It's basically a jaw that they can hinge up and down. The only problem with this is you're very limited in what you can do. That being, you can either have it go down or back up, and whatever's in between. So this will just be the basics on how to get started in your facial animations. What I've gone ahead and done is I've basically just made a blank face. And I've also separated the face into each part that I'm going to want to animate. That way, I don't have to resculpt the entire face every time I want to make a new expression. I've also brought in the other parts of the head that won't be animated just so that I can get a reference on where this will go. I'm going to turn on grid snap, so when I move the face away from where it started, I can move it back to its original location with ease. This will ensure that all the faces line up with each other. For this, I'm going to want to start by sculpting the mouth. I'm going to scope in a couple times to get myself into sculpt mode, and then I'm going to begin sculpting. Now I like using round shapes because that overall blends better and looks more natural. And to make it blend, I'm going to be using the stamp shape tool. And I'll do that by going into the tweak menu and increasing the blend amount. I'm also going to be turning on mirror because I want this to be a symmetrical expression. A quick tap of the touchpad and I'm going to select the color of the rest of the face to make sure that it matches up. And by increasing the blend amount, I'm able to incorporate these shapes seamlessly. And for this sculpt, I'm going to be doing a tongue out kind of face. I'm going to be lowering the blend amount and then adjusting my shape by pulling and smashing it down. And once I'm happy with my shape, I'm going to exit the shape editor and I'm going to change the color. A quick sculpting tip is not to worry about how you put down that shape because you can hit circle and you could adjust it and move it exactly where you want it to go. And remember, with sculpting, it'll take time to get it looking just right. So be patient and you will get it to look good. And if you're not good at a certain thing, you gotta realize that Dreams is meant to be collaborative. So reach out to somebody and also make sure to look at all the available assets that are ready to go. And now that I'm done with my sculpt, I'm gonna make copies of my blank face and make more expressions. And now that I've done that, you can see that I have a few different faces that are ready to go. If you're gonna be making faces for mouth movement, you're going to want to make sure that you have different expressions for the different syllables that can be made. I didn't do that here because this won't be a speaking character. I also made separate teeth, so I only had to make one sculpt of that and I could just swap it between the different faces. What you're going to want to make sure to do is you're going to want to go in and make sure that all of them are set to immovable. The reason you want to do this is because, as you can see, anything that's movable just falls out of the scene when in play mode. We're just going to turn off movable for every single face to fix the problem. Now, I deleted all the extra copies of the heads because I won't be needing them since I only have the one that never changes. Next, I'll be turning off the visibility of every single piece. We don't want to see them all at the same time. And even though they're invisible, there's still a way to see them without undoing all those settings. And to do that, we'll just untick preview invisibility and we'll see that they're all still here. And with all that done, we can now start working on our logic, which we'll start by putting down a microchip to store all of our logic in. Inside of this microchip, I'm going to be putting down two more. And the first one, I'm going to label as eyebrows. That way, I know exactly where the logic will be for this one. It's always a good idea to keep your logic organized and labeled to make it easier to work with. In the next microchip, I'm going to be labeling that as mouths. I'd recommend doing this for any different groups of parts that you have. I'm going to go into the mouth microchip and I'm going to put down a keyframe. Within this keyframe, I'm going to select the first mouth that I want to use and I'm going to simply turn back on the visibility. And I'll do that by opening up the tweak menu, going into physical properties and selecting visible. After that, I can stop recording. So now I'm going to go over and turn back on preview and visibility and we can see that this keyframe toggles on and off that mouth. I'll continue by adding a keyframe for each different mouth, recording the same movement. That being, re-enabling visibility. And I'll also be doing that for the different eyebrows as well. Finishing that, you can also see that I labeled each keyframe so I know what it is. 
I can enable any of these keyframes and it'll toggle the corresponding face, both for the lower part of the face as well as the upper part. And now that we have all of these ready to go, we're going to go back and turn on grid mode so that way we can line up each face back with the original model. An important thing I forgot to show is that you want to make sure that you're adding to the group whatever piece you're using. In this case, I'm going to make sure that every part of the face is going to be added to the head. That way when the head moves, the face will move with it. And now that everything's where it needs to be, I'm going to make an easier way to cycle between each face. For this, we are going to be using a selector. And we are going to be connecting each output to a different expression. That way, we don't have two different mouths showing at the same time. We'll be making sure that each output goes into a different keyframe and that no two outputs are the same. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take the teeth and I'm going to move them out of this microchip into the main one because they work a little bit differently than the rest of the face. With the selector now all wired up to the keyframes, I'm going to be going in and placing a switch. I'm going to be making some more copies of this switch, one for each keyframe. In this case, there's about seven keyframes, so I'll be making seven switches. Once I have all my switches ready to go, I'm then going to be going in and I'm going to be wiring each one of them into a different input on the selector. And after I've wired all of those in, I'm then going to be going in and turning off all of the switches except for the one at the very top. This will be the default state. I'm then going to be adding another keyframe. This one will be a recording of me turning off the first switch and activating the next one. I'm also going to be labeling this keyframe the same as the face that it goes with, as well as giving it a different color to make it easier to keep track of. I'll make a copy of this keyframe and relabel it to match up with the next face that I'll be animating. And after I've given it its brand new label, I can record the new keyframe. What I'll do is I'll deanimate the on switch and I'm going to have a different switch turn on, the next one in order. And now I have a keyframe for each different mouth as well as each different eyebrow. And for the eyebrows, I wired it up the exact same way as I did for the mouths. Now hitting play, we can see that every time I select each different keyframe, it activates a different facial expression. And this is the same for the brows as well. So now I have different easily changeable faces and I can configure them in any way that I want. Now the reason that I'm using keyframes for this is I have an easy way to just simply port over the logic to any part of the microchip and it'll be completely wireless. So for this, I'm just simply going to place a mouth as well as a set of eyebrows into this microchip over here. And I can then close this up and I'll have it so that both of these turn on whenever the microchip is active. So now I'm going to give this a quick test. And you'll see that whenever I activate the microchip, it'll activate the face that I put in there. Using this exact same method, I was able to create different hands as well. And I think this is an easy enough method to have any different kind of model swapping that you may want. So mess around and see what you can do. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope that you learned something and that you find a way to make this useful for you. Now get out of here. Go curl up in your bed with your little controller and have sweet dreams.